Welcome to Firefox, Smartphone Lab of Champions. Extra credit if you learn German so you can look up the experiments online in the original. Now, they've kindly translated this warning into English. Don't do anything stupid with your phone in the name of physics. Hold it tight. Tie it well. Use duct tape on the harness if you have to. <laughs> but for heaven's sake, don't tie your phone to your necktie. Swing it around your neck like a set of nunchucks and be very surprised at what happens next. Warning, don't drop your phone. Well, all right, if you insist on dropping your phone for this lab, drop it on the bed or something. Your two choices for this lab at home are the raw data from the pressure sensor, which will give you much more flexibility in cutting out any time it takes for the sensor to kind of wake up and get a clue any time you stumbled against something or the handy dandy setup they have here they have an lab called the elevator lab we are not doing the elevator lab in the times of coronavirus but if you've got stairs at home or stairs in your building you can do the up and down lab no trouble at all the elevator lab gives you all the graphs that you need for this lab right here. It just isn't so nice about letting you use the numbers. Press the triangle to start when you're ready to start taking data. Notice it kind of takes the sensor a little while to get a clue. Notice that huge drop in altitude since the moment I turn on the phone. I'm not doing anything! Uh, from playing around with Firefox this summer, I determined that it takes a minimum of six seconds for your phone to get a clue and realize that it's not being stolen or dropped off the porch or something. Minimum of six seconds. Also, look at the scale here. If you're seeing these teeny, teeny, tiny numbers, E negative two and E negative three, it's just trying to zoom in on the data. If you're taking this reading straight off the barometric pressure, then you we're going to want to cut out those six seconds once you've moved your data to the computer, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. My point is, I'm sitting here doing absolutely nothing, and according to the graphs, I seem to be going down and around and over a roller coaster. So you're going to want to look at the zoom, and you want to be really clear on what is significant and what isn't significant. Notice when I actually lifted it up, it took the phone a few seconds to process the data and get it onto the screen. So if you're doing Firefox at home, you're not really going to want to do something like this because it's going to take so long to resolve the data, you're going to lose a lot of the fine details. Experiments you do at home are going to be slow, methodical, and simple. I recommend the stairs. Again, start your data collection. If this is your second run, back up and go into the sensor again. Here I'm going to go into the pressure sensor so I can see what's going on. Start your data collection and watch the screen. Hang out for six seconds until it's sure you're not going anywhere. Four, five, six. All right, it's starting to flatten out now. It's realizing that on a scale of 995 meters above sea level, I haven't gone anywhere. Look at my scale, like 995.81 to 995.85. Okay, it's figured out that I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to go down the stairs at a constant speed. I'm going to hang out here for a minimum of six seconds, maybe more like 10, if I really want this phone to know that I'm not going anywhere. And when I'm done, I'm going to do some of the fancy things on the list. I'm going to try speeding up. I'm going to try slowing down. I'm going to do everything I can do in the vertical direction. And if you really, really, really want to get some data on gravity, I'll do this formally in a little bit, then start your sensor going, wait for the data to flatten out, and if you insist on dropping your phone, drop it onto a mattress or something, and then stop taking the data when you know the phone is here. When you're ready, go into the menu. You've got all these wonderful, wonderful choices. You've got export data, and it'll ask you if you want Microsoft Excel, easy as pie, or CSV, one of those comma delineated files that you can open in Google Slides or anything else. You can share a screenshot if you've got pictures of the graphs in the elevator experiment. You can, and this is my favorite one, enable remote 
access. Only do this on a network that you trust. However, you are doing this because you're at home, so I'm assuming you trust your own family network. Do this at home or at school, never ever in public. Once you've got that, it will give you this lovely, lovely little website right there at the bottom. Go there on your screen. You will see the graphs. You will see the data. You will see everything. Now, from here on in, everything is going to be documented online in the Remote Physics 2020 folder. This is where all of the Phase 4 physics classes are going to share their data so that if your phone is just not working one day, or your enabling remote access is just not letting you see your raw data, you can draw conclusions from other people who are working on the same lab that you are, who are dragging and dropping files with their graphs and their numerical data. If you're in the lab, I have highlighted in yellow numerical data that you may share with everyone else in the class. If it's not highlighted in yellow, do your own work. Trust me on this. Don't copy down your lab partner's mistakes. Here, waiting for you in the displacement velocity and acceleration uh, lab folder, we have the master graphing file. I have set up this file to automatically make graphs of position, in this case coming from the altimeter that measures altitude above sea level using the pressure from your barometer and using the change in displacement over time, plotting velocity just like your sonar sensor does in class, just like your calculator does in the elevator lab. I am doing what the sonar sensor does in class and using the velocity graph, the change in velocity over time, to look at the acceleration. When you export your data from your phone, it will give you a file from the pressure sensor with the date and the time and all the columns labeled with units. Thank you very much, nice German Firefox engineers. And you can copy your data straight off your most recent run and paste it into your copy of the barometer motion spreadsheet that you have downloaded on your computer. Do not muck up the master copy, please. Right there, and the graph will show you what you measured in your most recent trip. Position, velocity, acceleration, and when I say that it takes the first six seconds or so to really decide what's going on, you can look right here and simply get rid of this data and only focus on the bit where you actually dropped the whatever it was. You can change the scale on the axis if you're having trouble seeing. I don't recommend doing this for your first view, but you really, really know if it's between two and three. All right, now you're starting to see what's going on here, maybe 2.4. All right, now you can start to see more of the data as you play with the zoom. And you can save this as whatever you're going to save it as on your own computer. You'll notice that the formula I'm using to go from air pressure into height is not the static fluid pressure one that you're putting in the setup of your conclusion. You are admitting in big black letters that is an overly simplistic view. This is why I'm allowing you to report on the overly simplistic uh, simplistic view. Potential extra credit for anybody who reads through all of this, clicks on all the links to see how the formulas really work in actual air that has actual wind in it, and how we can go from pressure to height with a little bit more than three letters, and calculating the air temperature. Do me a favor, measure the temperature in your room, and update this. I'm getting it out of the outdoor thermometer I keep here. Um, I've got the Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion all set up for you. And once you take a look at the data in this column, you can figure out pretty quickly where zero is. If you're standing on your bedroom floor and dropping your phone down onto the bed, 
or if you're standing on the bottom of the basement staircase going up. You can set zero wherever you like, and then your position in meters will make a lot more sense. You'll notice I'm starting here at negative position because this particular run I did started in the basement and went up. If you're using the elevator lab as a permanent setup, you'll need screen captures of your graphs and you won't be able to cut the data out of them. You'll also have a much easier and more efficient time. The file you save to your computer when you enable remote access or export your data will have those same headers there where you can see them. It will have pressure and velocity and altitude, which is nice of them. This is what's going to give us our position. This is the velocity. It's got acceleration under a different tab because it's getting the acceleration from the accelerometer. Um, will all this still work in Google Slides? I don't believe in giving Microsoft money. We don't have it on my computer. Yeah, sure. Works in Google Slides. No problem. Just open the file in Slides instead of in Microsoft Excel. Some of these fancy pants menus will be in a different order, and you may occasionally have to go to the help menu and type in what it is you're trying to do or fix the formatting, but there's no reason you can't do any of the work for this class in slides, in Excel, or another spreadsheet of your choice. Do me a favor, if you're saving your work and it's not slides or Excel, other things like Keynote um, tend to cause problems on my computer. Do me a favor, save your final work as a PDF so I can see it. Again, please do not make any changes to the master file. Download your own master copy and then modify it as many times as it takes. We'll be learning to make these master copy spreadsheets ourselves over the course of the year. Don't drop your phone anywhere. It's not going to bounce very happily. Turn on your apps and have fun exploring.